Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the most important videos I've posted in a while. And I'm going to be explaining to all of you why this time is different in regards to XRP. XRP will make millionaires this next bull cycle. And I'm going to explain to you why this next bull cycle is closer than you all may expect. But first, I'm going to start off with Joe Rogan letting all of you know that he believes Bitcoin has the most likely possibility of becoming a universal currency. Crypto is going to make its return. And this one is going to be more violent than the last bull run. And I promise you, we're going to see some we didn't even expect. I mean, the the real fascinating crypto is Bitcoin. To me, I mean, that's the one that I think has the most likely possibility of becoming uh, a universal viable currency. And it's, you know, it's limited in the amount that there can be. It's, you know, you, you, people mine it with their own computer. It's like that to me is very fascinating. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's been implemented and that at least some like I've had uh, Andreas Antonopoulos on the podcast and he's. When he talks about it, he's living it. He's spending all of his money. Everything he That's has cool. paid is in Bitcoin. He pays his rent in Bitcoin. Everything he does is in Bitcoin. Now, let me make something abundantly clear to the XRP community and general crypto community as a whole. Bitcoin is the leader of the crypto market. Bitcoin does lead crypto bull runs. Bitcoin whenever it rises, brings up every other crypto on the planet. Bitcoin needs liquidity and volume to return for us to see this bull market again. And ladies and gentlemen, former SEC Chair Jay Clayton, who sued Ripple and caused the XRP price to not appreciate in value the way we expected the last bull run says, a Bitcoin ETF seems inevitable. As every legal question around it has been answered, and ladies and gentlemen, the next Bitcoin ETF, the one that gets approved, will trigger a bull run of bull runs. The amount of capital that will flood into the market will be astounding. And what I have to stress is that despite the fact that this is amazing, I have a principle that all of you cannot ignore. Look at the Maxi support the very system that they claim to be against. As Max Kaiser states, he is in support of a BlackRock Bitcoin ETF and general ETFs as a whole. They state, all Bitcoin spot ETFs could be approved within three to six months. That's very possible and I agree with that time frame. But what I hate to see is how these people who claim to be against the centralized system, against governments and powers that be, clap and applaud when it benefits the Bitcoin price. What I want all of you to realize is you cannot be virtuous, you cannot be emotional, you cannot be tribal in regards to making money. Because Bitcoin maxi virtual signaling is absolute bullshit. They do not believe in what they say. Bitcoin will not be a monopoly. It will not be the world's reserve currency or a global currency that overthrows governments. Bitcoin has been controlled for a while. And the powers that be have cornered this market and are making it their own. And the sooner... You wrap that around your head, the sooner you'll realize that XRP is the true answer. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why ISO 20022 is live. FedNow is also live. November upgrades and new go lives go for ISO 20022. And what you all need to understand is that they are getting rid of cash slowly but surely to introduce central bank digital currencies and get rid of privacy, get rid of anonymity, get rid of sovereign control of cash, but also 
it eliminates bank runs. And ladies and gentlemen, this video that I posted seven months ago shows that they've been preparing for bail-ins for a long time now. They know that the system is failing. I showed you how here in Lebanon, they've had bail-ins. Sri Lanka has experienced economic crisis. Iraq is prohibiting cash withdrawals. And Nigeria is getting rid of cash as well. Nigeria has pushed back quite a bit, and they're putting a pause to their CBDC rollout. But guys, that does not mean they're not going to keep pushing us to the brink. I'm going to remind you that bail-ins has always been the plan, and that's what they're trying to do. CBDCs are inevitable, and we have to plan accordingly. It's important that people understand they can be bailed in, but you don't want a huge run on the institution. But they have, I mean, they're going to be. That's, and, and it could be an early warning signal to the FDIC and the primary regulators when these things happen. And there may be some other prices, this is uh, similar to what Jay was saying, in the market that you can tell whether people understand how the, who's going to be protected, who isn't going to be protected. It would be, I think, an interesting study to look at the evolution of market prices in a situation like March of 2020 for example, and see whether people understood what might happen. I, I might go further than that, Don, because I think that you look at the evolution, I think we have to sit down and talk to long-term debt investors and make sure that they, as a stakeholder group, fully understand bank debt today is not what it was before. It is not principle protected by design. And I think that that, is, that expectation, I like how you started off, Betsy, like, it's all about expectation setting. And I think that is, that is absolutely critical. If that doesn't hold, this whole thing doesn't hold. And so I think it's uh, one area to focus on. I do want to go back to something Jay said about stabilizing statements. In my experience, they're not stabilizing. If you have to make a stabilizing statement, you're in real trouble. And uh, and I think that part of that means that there's a lot of pre-work that needs to be done such that those statements aren't seen as a reach. Because if they're seen as the reach, the market sniffs that out in two seconds and it actually has the opposite impact. And this is one of those big challenges, like what, what can be done ahead of time so that it's all going as planned, hands off the wheel. This is this is part of what we've been prepared for. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's think about that. They are essentially telling all of you that the system you are made to trust in, the system of money is a Ponzi scheme. And let me say something else right now. Everything in regards to the financial markets is a Ponzi scheme. The stock market's a Ponzi. Cash is a Ponzi. Crypto is a Ponzi. Left, right, everywhere, Ponzi, Ponzi, Ponzi. And the sooner you get that into your heads, the easier you'll be able to make money. Ladies and gentlemen, this Ponzi of the world financial system and global currencies is about to hit the point of no return. It's going to be obvious to the world exactly what's going on. And RFK Jr. even says he's against CBDCs because they will be an instrument of power and control. They're going to abandon the fiat currency system because that is going to be the way the Ponzi scheme keeps going. They're going to run off like bandits. They've inflated the currency already to get all the real assets in their possession. And then they're going to give us the new fiat that's going to control us. CBDCs are slavery. And slavery is what's going to come out of the other side of this massive scam. And guys, that is why I am such a big believer in Ripple and XRP. The reason is because I think this is our financial lifeboat to be able to profit from the scam that they're about to implode on our heads. Here, thank you to Mr. Man XRP for this. It's stated from the Bankers Association for Finance and Trade that we overestimate the speed of change, but underestimate the magnitude. And doesn't that feel like exactly what the XRP army has been suffering from? We've overestimated how quickly this change could happen.
But now that so much time has gone by, I think people are underestimating how much this change is going to happen. We've been running through quicksand, but now we're going to the moon like a rocket ship. The IMF had put out a document titled Trust Bridges and Money Flows, where they described the need and function for such bridges. And at the end of the paper, they mentioned two projects, XRP and XLM. I need to remind the entire XRP community that I have a nice fat bag of XLM as well. And it's not just going to be one global currency, one crypto to run it all. There won't be a monopoly, but a synchronistic rollout of a multi-digital asset-based financial system. And the sooner you get that through your head, the more money you're going to make. Exactly what the DLPC is. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Scott. So, uh, you know, we've all heard of the failures of trade lens and we trade and Marco Polo. And uh, the question is why, right? I'd start off with Bill Gates. He made the statement, we overestimate the speed of change and we underestimate its magnitude. And that's sort of where we are at. Uh, what, what has happened over the last three, four years is now new building blocks have formed. Think of them as bridges from the traditional world of ERP, because data is important, needs to be secured, to this new world of Web3, from the traditional world of payments, wire transfers, to this new world of smart contract triggered release of funds. Right? And payment risk, right, from the traditional world of law to the model law for the electronic transfer records. These are all building blocks that didn't exist. And to sort of traverse this new world, you need a vehicle, think of it, and that's the DLPC. That's how we see it. And we think what is needed is essentially an instrument that uh, is legal, uh, that allows for data to be secure, where you complete control over privacy, and where you're able to effectively leverage the legal system for final recourse. And if you then sort of take that one step further, and you look at all the existing instruments, the EUCB, the letter of credit, uh, digitized invoices. So there's a distinction between digitization and, if you will, digital asset formation. And where the blockchain really comes in is in the formation of this digital asset. And where the problems really lie is having those bridges from the traditional data world to the new data world, from the traditional payment world to the new payment world, from the traditional legal world to the new legal world. We are fortunately at a point where all of that now exists. And I can go into greater detail on how each of these things play out. And we have a one-page or slide that if somebody could put up, would be useful as back, background. And the DLPC is a set of standards and best practices that came out of PAFT. So those of you who are not familiar with it, you should be able to find Not only that, guys, but here from Finextra, we're seeing that they're warning us that we are at an inflection point where market go-lives of digital assets and DLT projects are occurring. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. There's no holding back. Position your chess pieces correctly to profit from the fourth industrial revolution and the digital age. What tech trends you're seeing at the moment? Well, for me, it's really delightful to see that we are um, really at the inflection point where very uh, serious organizations um, here on the floor, many of them have booth here, have been already not only utilizing um, DLT emerging technology in their operations, but they've been in production for a year. They have processed, you know, trillion dollar months, like in case of Broadridge on their repo platform, or, you know, in case of Aculand, for instance, they already saving 100 million that, uh, for the industry, right, with their one source platform, um, you know, with D7 on, um, on um, a clear stream and Deutsche Börse Group, we see the accelerator issuance and they've also been in production for a year we hosted fireside chat yesterday here has it been standing room only so people do see the interest of learning from this top leaders that are paving the way and what's really interesting also is that we see is that while we have like long past uh, that stage of um, like oh are we doing another POC you know no we're in production for you know over a year like the other aspect is like it's much more about interoperability now how do we utilize new business models and create more mutualized workflows between all those distinct applications and ecosystems and that's where I see also for instance 
instance, good use for solutions like Damo Finance uh, that we utilize in some of our day-to-day -day work as well, um, specifically like libraries that allow to accelerate the time to market, time to production, because now it's like, we do not want to waste any time. We, you know, we moved we on and we want to get to market, right? And mm -hmm. we want to bring more products to market because all of our customers can benefit faster from, um, you know, our digital transformation. That's why you're, if I could add, that's why you're questioning the way you've asked this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to cap off this video for today, we have this from Crypto Eddie, a former senior VP at Ripple, Marcus Treacher, talking about the real-time gross settlement cross-border payment liquidity solution. Atomic settlements with a revolutionary way of thinking about liquidity. Guys, if nothing else, what I want you to get from this video is that everything we've ever discussed on this channel about XRP has been correct from the beginning. You gotta decipher the lizard talk, as I like to say, and read between the lines to what these powerhouses in the financial industry are really discussing. XRP is about to show us what it's really about. And I can't wait for every single one of us to become the new 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Um, and well, tell us about RTS Global's approach there. You mentioned that's the, the problem you're trying to solve. What, what's, uh, I guess, different about the, the approach to cross-border settlement that, that you're providing? Our solution enables the, the funding required, the placing of that liquidity to happen immediately and what we call atomically. And that means that the, the money is moving between the currency that the payment is starting at to the currency that, that the payment is going to end at immediately and without any half payment problem. So if you're making a payment in the UK again, um, £1,000, that £1,000 will only move if at the other end of the flow, let's say in Brazil again or in the USA, the, um, the equivalent of dollars have moved as well. So we make the whole transaction atomic and we also have a revolutionary way of thinking about that, that liquidity so that we can make that movement happen at any point in time, any time of day, any day of the working week, and ultimately to any value.